Hello friends, David Vos here. What a beautiful day I'm having. What a beautiful, beautiful, partly cloudy, warm fall day. I hope you're having a wonderful day where you are. Well, friends, we did that video yesterday, <clears throat> which I thought was a pretty good start in trying to understand all of this. But here's the thing. No matter how clear you make it, and no, how, no matter how many videos you do or no matter how many explanations are made that seem to fit and you put this all together, there's always some questions. A lot of times we had these thoughts from the time we were young, we believed in them and we find comfort in those thoughts they seem to be the only thoughts that are true because and here's the reason not necessarily because it is true but because the subject is so vast and there are so many things information and pieces that you need to know to, to arrive at the right answer it's almost like a hub or a web of roads all leading from all directions towards the center. And you're crossing roads that are inner spheres that go around. But they all kind of like a web. They all meet in the center. And sometimes you can be on one of those roads and take an exit on another road. It's like a maze. You, you don't know which way is the center. Which way is home. Because... You can't really see clearly when you're only on this one road and you can't see the roads farther down the road. You're limited. You're, you're just, you better have a map. And so the Bible is all this web of information, all of it true, and all leads to the absolute conclusion that you must reach. But you're on one road and you're seeing some things, but you're not seeing a bunch of other things on the other side. And so it takes not just relying on things you were told when you were little or scriptures that you thought fit this way or that way. I mean, for instance, people actually think, I believe a lot of Christians think that when Jesus comes, he's going to, I guess, promote these guys over there in the Middle East. That that's, this is all of the Lord doing, bringing these people back. And they're going to reign over us. And what? With, with some kind of biotechnology? That's all going to be from the Lord? With some kind of... Uh, Bill Gates biotechnology? We're all going to be computerized? AI? Is that what you think? These guys are not working for the Lord. There must be judgment. Somebody's got to pay for the things that's... The evils that's being done. And we all know... That the guy who runs Blackwater and Vanguard, one of them, and I'm just going to say a word, and I hope you can deduce from this the importance of what I'm saying. He's a fink, all right? We have a lot of these, let's go back to this Bavarian area. You've heard of the Bavarian Illuminati. That's right next to Bohemia. You've heard of the Bohemian Grove. This is right in Germany and Switzerland where they got their bank. So these guys are not irreprehensible by any means. Now, the rest of the people, Jesus told you, if the little children fall down, we don't go and beat them. We held, we hold the, their, their schoolmaster. We don't, we blame the leaders of the country. Those who own the infrastructure and are putting this stumbling block before the children. We're not going to blame the children. We're not going to blame all the masses of individuals anywhere in the world. Except for that they'll all pay for their own sins. If you didn't have any oil in your lamp... <clears throat> What is that oil? Well, whatever it is, it makes the light burn bright. We all got to have the light of Christ shining. 
And it seems that you can either go and refine the oil yourself or you can go and buy it at the market. Jesus said the hour was late and they didn't have enough oil. Well, it's, it's I guess they were just silly not to have enough oil. They weren't paying attention. That's that's what it is. And that's what cost them the whole the door was shut. Just that, just that little simple, oh, I forgot the oil. And that's all that keep you from you from being with the Lord. It was more than just, I forgot some oil. The oil, it's like forgetting to eat for the rest of your life. I mean, you can't do that. If in your body's in good health and you can feel and, and you can hear the gnawing pain in your stomach, you, you're going to eat. But some individuals, they seem to, Keep doing things that are that they know are that is wrong, and they know it's wrong. Not maybe not murdering and stuff like this, but they're you not know, like they just keep lying and being deceptive to others to get gain. They're trying to work their way up this way. You know, they ain't murdered nobody or nothing yet. You know, but they're just doing this, and and their heart says no, don't do this. Their conscience bothers. They just keep going anyway, and there comes a point when you're conscience is seared everybody has the voice within them the still small voice but most people can't hear it you got to be quiet and go into a higher upper room or on a mountain like mount of light mount oreb like elijah and hear the still small voice you've got to be quiet so We've been told that Israel is this great thing and oh, look at it. Oh, we got to stand for that. That's what we stand for. They're, they're the righteous or something. or what? I don't know. They're the chosen. What does that mean? If we never knew anything or learned anything from Jesus, did we not learn that Jesus doesn't care one whit whether you're chosen or got a pedigree? The Pharisee who kept all the laws from birth So what will I do to enter into the kingdom? Jesus said, well, why don't you just give all your wealth away? And give it to the poor. That's what you need to do. Really? Was that just a test? No. That's what we all got to do. We got to give this world up and leave mother, brother, <laughs> mother, brother, father, daughter, and houses and fields and everything for the sake of Christ. Why? Because he's a jealous deity? No. He doesn't force anybody. You must just see, receive his gift of eternal life simply by hearing the word and then having enough common sense to investigate, to know that you have a need and seek and you will find. That's all you got to do. But so many people are under this delusion and we're being told that, I mean, a lot of people are going to have to believe this. This is what they're going to be saying. They want a one world government. They're going to say, well, it's prophesied in the Bible. We've got to accept it. There it is, Israel. They're going to win the war. Well, yesterday we found out that they're arming the other side. Obama gave Iranians nuclear materials, you know, the ingredients to build bombs and gave them billions of dollars. And it was a big, they wanted you to know about it. They would put it in the news. If they own Fox and CNN, my goodness. So it's like they put that out there. I want you to know what they did. Remember back in those days when we were giving money to the Iranians? And at the other hand, yeah, you know, people are saying, wait a minute, they're the enemy, right? If you're for Israel, then you wouldn't want to arm them because they don't like Israel. That's why we're supposed to be for England and Europe and stuff, but we're against Russia, China, right? Why are we making all these deals with China? Why do we pretend we hate Russia? It's just a pretend. It's like Democrats pretend to, to hate Republicans. Remember how Trump used to hang with the Democrats? And they were Democrats. And all of a sudden, a political opportunity, he ran as a Republican. And he brought warp speed and AI and, and the one world government. And of course, he's for Israel. 
They put him on the dollar bill or on a coin or something and declared him to be the, the Messiah, Cyrus. Now, there's something that is pretty interesting that the entire world does not know what that means. I guarantee they do. You got Christians that they're like, oh, we read the Bible every day. We're scholars. And we've got concordances and dictionaries as well. But they don't know a darn thing about anything. Cyrus is that same person that we keep talking about. The czar. The Khazar, the Caesar, the Caesars. It's all the same word. Oh, Cyrus. That's the only king. You got to be, to be the Messiah, you got to be the czar. But remember, Cyrus was the king of Persia. Media and Persia. Now, how in the world? I thought you got to be Judean to be the Messiah. And most Christians are like, yeah, well, he was kind of Messiah. The Bible calls him Messiah, but of course he's not the real Messiah because he's not Judean. Well, if he's not the real Messiah, then I guess we can all just breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> it's not going to be Trump then. <laughs> it's going to be the Antichrist claimed to be the Messiah, the Cyrus. But wait a minute. Because, wait a minute. Trump's not a Judean, is he? Well, he's German. And that's this Bavaria area. And now, students, what is one and one? It's two. Thank you. You've confirmed my conclusions. But here's the thing. This is the part you don't know. Israel was taken into captivity to the cities of the Medes and the Persians. And another time they were taken into captivity to Assyria. And another time they were, the Judeans were taken into Babylon. But this, these Israelites were taken into the Medes and the Persians. So Daniel then finds himself up there and, oh, hey, let's make this guy king. Huh? You just took over country and now you make one of their peasants a king? No, Daniel was of the tribe of Judah, a royal bloodline. And so was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, what are they doing becoming the kings and the rulers? Because Cyrus was their brother. Israel was there in captivity. And they took those captive whom took them captive. They were the Syrians. They were the Medes. They were the Persians. Daniel was their great Magi. And Cyrus was the Messiah that gave the call to rebuild and to restore Jerusalem. That's what the Messiah does. Yeah, but how could the Messiah be over in Persia? Remember, this cult today that is over there believes that they were given all the land to the river Euphrates and all the way to the Nile. So, when Cyrus became king, he was Judean. And he, that is why he made the call and it went forth to rebuild Jerusalem. That would have been their place of worship. And friends, that's what they're planning on doing now. The Messiah doesn't have to live in that little tiny area that, that the Negev or wherever they're at, the little place south of Lebanon. He could live anywhere in the world and would probably be living in the nation that is the supreme nation ruling over the others, like Persia was then. But this Judean, like Cyrus was, was of the dispersion and was living in a faraway country, but it's actually destined and they are supposed to take all the way to the river to the Euphrates all the way up and around through most of Persia and all the way to Nile meaning they get Africa, Europe and Asia well now prophecy has gone down further and we're here in America and who's reigning over this country is it Trump has he been declared the Cyrus for Israel their messiah well, that's what they're saying. Look here, 
what I mean. This is ABC News. Israeli group sells special edition Trump coin. Look at that coin. You see Trump featured prominently in the front. Behind him is King Cyrus. And it says to fulfill 70 years. You see what they're saying? This isn't just somebody interpreting it wrong. That means that the captivity that they were supposed to have for 70 years is over. It's And, and so Cyrus gave forth the call to restore Jerusalem. That's who he was. He's called the Messiah in the Bible. Mine anointed one, my Messiah. So obviously with Trump being right there, his face being imaged with Cyrus in the background, they're saying that Trump is going to restore the temple and that would mean he is the Messiah. The temple coin featuring Trump alongside King Cyrus to mark the embassy opening. And, and so, instead of being now taken captive to Persia and then taking over Persia, they probably think, oh, now we're in America, we're going to take that over too. Wherever our foot shall tread, it shall be thine, is what the prophecy really says. So they really plan on taking the entire world not just that little area over there in Palestine. And so their Messiah is going to say, hey, let's build the temple. And that's going to happen shortly. I guarantee it. And so it seems they've already let the cat out of the bag who the Antichrist is. Now I was telling you about this Muhammad or Muhammad Abbas fulfilling something that Nostradamus had said as well as the Quran and, and the, you know, the Muslim scholars, they believe in, in this uh, person who comes and reigns for seven years, and then at the end of that time, Jesus comes. Now, we don't know if the Jesus they're talking about is the same, because it's not in the Quran. It's not in the Holy Script. Sure. It's in these cults, these Sunnis and these different kinds of cults that developed. I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm not of Christendom or any of their cults. And I believe in the Holy Scripture. It doesn't say anything about this. But their teachings have been that Jesus would come back. Of course, they, they don't know that the Quran says Jesus is the Lord. And he never sinned. And some of the things you've heard about what the Quran teaches is just their interpretation. It's, it's financed propaganda. But I can tell you what modern Islam, I don't mean the Quran, I don't mean the Holy Scriptures, I mean the modern Sunnis and Sufis and whatever. The different groups. They were started like cults, just like Christianity financed for purposes and they start these little theories and ideas. I mean, just because Hal Lindsey says there's going to be a rapture doesn't mean it's true. But they're expecting someone to be kind of like our Bible says an Antichrist. He'll reign seven years. They don't call him the Antichrist. We don't know who this might be. Some say that they've got this guy that comes in and murders a third of the uh, of the Muslims. I believe that this is coming from a prophet. And they're talking about this. And I believe that Muhammad Abbas fulfills that. He's the head of the Palestinian movement and the Hamas and all of the like, you know, the, the PLO and all of this. He's got armies all around the world and they've infiltrated the United States through sleeper cells. That's what they're saying. But I'm not saying that he is the Antichrist. I think there's going to be several different individuals on the scene. He's already been there three and a half years. He gets another three and a half years during Trump's presidency. The last three and a half years, they rule together. Well, that's what the prophecy says. Their guy named Muhammad reigns seven years 
part of the time he reigns that with the Messiah. I think they're talking about Trump. And Jesus himself said there will be many antichrists. John says there will be many antichrists. This is how we know it's the last hour. But Jesus says there'll, many will say, I am the Christ. And many will say, come out in the meeting. He's over here in the desert. Different groups saying he's over here, he's over there. But it seems to me like this is all going to begin when Trump becomes president. That gives us about a three and a half year period until 2028 when I think it's got to be all over because remember that race or that generation, ethne, will not pass away. So that whole thing that started in 48 will not pass away. And that generation is 60 or 70 years, 80 if they're mighty. It can't go beyond 2028. 20, and also remember, if Jesus was born in 7 BC, then, and if he did die when he was 33 years old, if he was 33, of course, there's other ways of looking at this, then in the year 30, he would be in 37. So he would have died like in 27 or something like this. We don't know the exact year. If he died in year 28, then it'll be exactly 2,000 years from then when he'll return. Because it tells you that in the book of Hosea. After two days, he'll raise us up on the third day. And those are speaking of millenniums. But most of the people in the, United, in the United States, at least, that I people I know, they went, oh, yeah, well, it's going to happen. It's in the Bible, right? Yeah, we got to be for Israel. Uh, Hagee and all of the, you know, I'm sure Osteen and, and I've never heard their opinions, but I'll guarantee that it, all of them, if they're on television, are Z-I-O-N-ists. And you know, yeah, that's kind of bad. We kind of get that. Let's go protest and we'll we'll be for Palestine this time. Well, that's a new thing. They're letting that go now. They're, they're promoting it now. You do think it's all spontaneous? People out running in around in the streets here in America and all around the world protesting against Israel? No. These college students, they're told what to do from their college professors. They've been steeped in some kind. It's all pro. It's all uh, orchestrated, and and they do it on purpose. And we got it all set up. Everybody's working for this big beehive, right? That's that their only purpose in life is to destroy all of us and, and destroy the world because they know they're going into the bottomless pit when Jesus comes back. And their deity is vengeance. So, we think, well, Israel must be a good thing. And because they're there, Jesus is coming soon. And everything's going to be great. And all of us peasants will get down and grovel and make pilgrimages to Jerusalem, I guess. And whenever we see one of these Judeans, we'll get down and curtsy. I don't know. Is that what you think? <laughs> you must know that the 12 tribes, is all the tribes, and Judea is not the only tribe. There are another 11 tribes after that. And they were scattered into all the world. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. They weren't there in the first century when Jesus said to his disciples, I want you to go unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And from what we understand, Philip went to Africa. Thomas went to India. The Apostle Peter says in his epistle, he went to Babylon. And Paul went to Greece. And all the way up to Rome. He said, he defined it to the Greeks. First to the Jews and then to the Greeks. Well, if Paul was an apostle, and we got all these letters that he wrote to the Greeks and the Romans, why is it we didn't have any of the letters from Thomas and Philip and Matthew and all the other apostles and Nathaniel. Where do they all go? We do have their scriptures. You see, Paul 
wrote to the Greeks. The Koine Greek Bible is the message of mostly Paul. But yes, Peter, who was the head of the whole, he was the Pope, he wrote a couple of letters to the Greeks to let them know that Paul's doing a good job, but they were over in Babylon. Because remember, Jesus sent them to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So there's lots of different sheep of the house of Israel, and all the apostles went to different places. We got all the letters from Paul, but we didn't get all the letters from Peter and Matthew and Levi and Judas, the other Judas and all the others, right? Thomas. Well, we do have other books by their names. But here's why we don't have it. Notice that John, when he's writing the book of Revelation, writes to these seven congregations that are up there in Asia Minor, the same place that Paul went. And Peter addresses it to them. Well, is, why, why would they do that? Peter knows that's not the only children of Israel. They went east, west, north, and south. And even the land of Sinan. All over the world, in every nation, they will be brought in the latter days. So why would they think they're just up there in Greece? Well, they didn't. You see, we don't have all the writings of Peter and James and John and, and, and when, when they were writing to their people in whatever language, you know, if it was um, Aramaic or something because they, they were in Persia or something, although most of the world spoke Greek. But there were various dialects all out, you know, the Gallic languages and I'm sure in America at that time they didn't speak Greek. But wherever they went, they probably wrote their letters in that other language. We already said that Daniel went to Persia and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego became the governors of the entire world. They were the dispersion. One would go all the way over to Europe. One would be ruler over India and, and the, the East and one would be ruler over the Africa. This was a worldwide thing. Cyrus was the king. He was the, the Judean Israelite Messiah that restored Jerusalem. So as we've said, Buddha was the prophet Ezekiel. That was before Christ, 600 years. The children of Israel had been in captivity all around the world. Even before 600 BC, Dan and a branch of Judah went to Troy and then to Ireland and all over the world they went in various exiles and they they didn't they weren't taken into captivity only once up there in Assyria that some of those went up into over the Caucasus mountains became Genghis Khan and took over Germany but there were other dispersions when they went to the Medes and the and the Persians and Daniel became the head magi of all of them there were times when they went to Egypt. That's in some of the Bible parts of the Bible that we don't have. They threw them out in the Apocrypha, in the book of Maccabees. But there's many dispersions. So the fact that John and Peter mention only the Greeks means that they were writing to the Greeks in Greek, saying and giving their approval and their authority to the work of Paul to the Greeks. They were all in agreement. We do have Peter's writings. That's the religion that came from that area. We're digging up the Babylonian tablets. We are just now looking at some of these groups. There were there are other groups like the Mandeans. They've got Holy Scripture. They say John the Baptist was a high priest for them. And they go back to Elijah. All of these groups have various, the Zoroastrians, Zerah, that's that Osiris, the Tsar, the Messiah from Cyrus. Zeraster, Esther is Queen Esther or Easter, you know, that's the Divine Mother. All the nations have this information. And the tribes are scattered. They're lost. Different tribes all around the world. The only one we know about the one that Paul went to. And many times they're called the nations. It says that Japheth was given the isles of the seas and to him the isles of the nations spread. So some say the word nation doesn't even mean all tribes of the world, but just these one group that were of Japheth. But then it says that he shall dwell in his tent. 
Shem shall dwell in his tent. So we know how and what happened there. Dan, who had a mother from Judah, so he was both from Judah and Dan, he married Delilah up there, the Dorians, and they become the Greeks and the Spartans and all the way down. And that holy priesthood went to Rome. The same holy priesthood is in all the world, to Ireland, to Britain, Genghis Khan, the Japanese, the Shinto, they had the same religion. They've got this little Ark of the Covenant they carry around the white robed priests on two poles. They carry this chest that looks like the Ark of the Covenant. And they do this whole atonement ritual. They have samurai priests because they're from Samaria. They're the dispersed ones from Israel or Samaria. And so the apostles went to there. And we're, we're going to finally realize we've had their verses and scriptures all along. It's Buddhism and Shintoism, Sikhism, Brahmanism, Zoroastrianism, Mithraism, and even the Druids, and the Native Americans, and their beautiful faith, which is different and distinct from certain Aztecs that came in later. All of the religions of the world came from the prophets. The Apostle Paul says, when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, then all Israel will be saved. Think about what that means. So that all Israel may be saved. Well, if they're all back over there now, then this part in the Bible where they all come and they're gathering to Mount Zion and he raises up an ensign and he blows the horn and then there's judgment. How could that be fulfilled that way? They're just, you, they're not seeing the scriptures from all points of view, from all the scriptures, only what they were taught. Everybody got their own little, the Judeans over there now think in terms of their orthodoxy that they have and Job's witnesses only think in terms of what they were told. But I want, to, I want to share a verse that you'll never hear from any of these Christians today, modern nominal Christians, because they don't have it in their vocabulary. They don't read this or, or promote this verse because they wouldn't know what to do with it. Well, look at Jeremiah chapter 4. King James Version. Deity calls Israel his promise. If thou wilt return, O Israel saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thy abominations out of my sight, then shall thou not remove. So here's what the Lord is telling them. If you would get rid of all your abominations, then you will not be removed. Of course, this is kind of rhetorical because he goes on to say, you're not going to do that. I've strove with you for a long, long time and you're rebellious. And Jesus said, oh, how I would have gathered you like a hen gathers her chicks but you would not. Therefore, your house is left unto you desolate. That's what the whole point's about. Wrath upon this people. It says that in the book of Luke. Jesus said that. It's in red letters. For those of you who like red. There will be wrath upon this people and they will take it captive into all the nations. Remember what we said yesterday? The prophecy says one of third of them will be wiped off the face of the map in the initial blow. A third of them will be taken into captivity. And a third of them will die in a famine. But as we said the other day, it isn't just going to be Israel. It's all the nations around about. So there's something that these people haven't done correctly. Well, just listen to what Jesus says. You're worshiping the devil. Your father's a liar and a murderer. You're hypocrites. You think that by law you can have righteousness. See this prostitute? I love this woman. She has more faith than you. And you, from birth, you tried to keep all these commandments, but yet you're not righteous because you think you're better than her. And those who think they should sit in this seat up here, way up high, are going to be sent down to the really little low stool over there on the end. 
and you will be humble. Because all the world will see that your pride caused you to do all these terrible, ridiculous things. So he says, And thou shalt swear, the Lord liveth, in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, sow not among the thorns, circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Let my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Well, when is this prophecy, if that's what this is, supposed to take place? This is written by Jeremiah 600 years before Christ. Was it ever fulfilled? Let's see if we can get a clue. Because there's a disaster coming from the north. Well, you know this disaster that's coming from the north is spoken of throughout the Bible. Ezekiel, Isaiah, Revelation. The armies of the north come down and destroy Jerusalem. And this is when you blow ye the trumpet, right? The trumpet of Joel, the latter days. This is the final blow. We're going to set up a standard towards Zion here in a second. You're going to find. All of it's there, but we, didn't, we were never told anything about any of this. Blow ye the trumpet in the land, cry, gather together and say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. Set up the standard towards Zion. Retire, stay not. For I will bring evil from the north at a great destruction. The lion is come up from his thicket. Who is that? Most of the Middle East. And the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. When have we ever had this happen before? Who is the destroyer of all the Gentiles? Meaning, usually they mean of the, 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 the inhabits the Isles of the Sea, like Europe and America. And yeah, yeah, the queen's got her crown over uh, a company of nations. Australia and I guess they own all of South America as well, right? Parts of Africa, and they own all the canals and the roadways and the ports. They have absolute control. That's the Gentiles. So if the Gentiles are going down, that means England and America is going down. And who is the destroyer of this of the Gentiles? He's on his way. He's gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate. And thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. You see, oh, Dave, they talk about this all the time in the Bible, here and there and everywhere, and it never, it never has happened. We could just dismay, just discredit all of that because it's just fairy tales. It's not going to happen. Well, here's the thing. Any of you who believe in the Bible, yeah, you read about this all the time, and you always think, well, that's just for the time of the end somewhere, you know, Armageddon, whenever that happens, oh, <laughs> Or some of you think, well, that's just something that probably happened back in the day somewhere. Like, it's not going to happen now. Not to me. Friends, this is a prophecy for our day. And we're going to show you that beyond any shadow of a doubt. And when you find out what this prophecy says, you would might be afraid until you hear the good news that you don't have to go through any of this, that we're about to be delivered. And all you got to do is investigate, learn, understand, receive the truth that you might be saved or delivered from this wrath to come. But according to this, the Gentiles, at some point in history, their cities, all of them, will be without an inhabitant. And that means nobody's left. Nobody's left. Does it mean there's not going to be one person? Well, that's what it says. But I don't know. What do you think? You think it could be kind of symbolic? Well, it doesn't look any other way. And where do you get the rest of this? Where do we get a load of this? 
For this, gird you with sackcloth. Lament and howl, for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. It hasn't yet turned back. They're still being punished, right? And the denunciation continues until the end thereof, according to Daniel. And it shall come to pass at that day, saith the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, the heart of the princes and the priests. They'll be astonished and the prophets shall wonder. Friends, this is the, the time we're about to go through. Revelation talks about this where it'll be upon the, the merchant and the buyer and, and the king and the, and, the, and the peasant and the priest and the layman and, and, and the buyer and the seller and the man and the, and the girls and the boys and the, yeah, all of it. And then I said, ah, oh, Lord deity, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people and Jerusalem saying, ye shall have peace whereas the sword reacheth unto the soul. Wow. It's just a great deception. The devil has come down to you having great wrath to deceive the entire world. This is the great deception. It's called the great deception. You're greatly deceived, this people. And Jerusalem and the whole world believes this ridiculous lie. And the Bible tells you in the New Testament, this is when they say peace, peace, peace and security, there shall be sudden destruction. They think they're going to have a one world government based there in Israel. Well, they, I think most of them who really know what's going on knows that this is just something is being played out for the world. And at that time, it shall be said to this people and to Jerusalem. Remember this people, like Jesus said, wrath upon this people. A dry wind of the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not to fan nor to cleanse. Even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Behold, he shall come up as clouds and his chariot shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall the vain thoughts lodge within thee? For a voice declareth from Dan, and publish affliction from Mount Ephraim. Make ye mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field, they are against her round about because she hath been rebellious against the Lord. Thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness because it is bitter, because it reacheth unto thine heart. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet and the alarm of war. Now, there you go back to the trumpets at the book of Revelation and then you get the bowls of wrath. Destruction upon destruction is cried. For the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are Scottish children. And they have not done understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form. And it was void. Meaning there are no people, no inhabitants. And the heavens, they had no light. I beheld the mountains and lo, they trembled. And all the hills moved lightly. I beheld and lo, there was no man and all the birds of the heavens were fled. And I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it. Remember what Jesus said, the heavens shall be dark and the star will fall. The moon won't give its light. This is, this is what this is talking about. 
It says, what's going to happen just before the coming of Christ? The sun will not give us light. The moon will be turned into blood and the stars shall fall. And then they will see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. And so the earth is going to mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it and I have purposed it. And I will not repent. Neither will I turn back from it. This is what the Lord is saying. This is going to happen no matter what, what you want. It's, this is what he's, he's already decided. The whole city shall flee for the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. And they shall go into the thickets and climb up upon the rocks. And every city shall be forsaken. And not a man dwell therein. Not one man. And when thou art spoiled, what will you do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson. Though thou deckest thyself with the ornaments of gold. What does this mean? Oh, because they're so rich, right? They're the richest people in the world. They got all the banks. They're the stars in Hollywood. Well, it's not going to do them a lot of good now, is it? Though thou rentest thy face with painting in vain, shall thou make thyself fair. <laughs> all of your makeup too. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. What? People are going to turn on them? They're going to start... For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail. A woman in travail. What's the woman going to give birth to? The kingdom. And it ain't in Jerusalem. Friends, do you understand? As soon as Jerusalem's destroyed, the ten kings will destroy her and burn her with fire. And there will be a child that has been, that will be born. The woman will go into the wilderness. And during that period of time, the child will be born and caught to heaven. The kingdom will be established. And the dragon will pour water forth out of his mouth to cause the woman to perish. But the earth will come to the woman's help. She'll go into the wilderness. Who does the Antichrist have a war with? It says he made war with the saints of the Most High. But he loses the war. So he, the dragon poured water forth from his mouth. Usually that means an army. It could be a spiritual army. But the earth comes to the woman's help. That's the church. And it's those that are in that covenant. By the end of that tribulation, it's going to be painful. It's like a birth pains, but we're going to give birth to the kingdom. And she's protected there for a three and a half year period. And then at the end of that time, you see her clothed with the sun, the moon beneath her feet. She's conquered this world. And she has a crown of 12 stars. And this is another prophecy about this particular time. Jerusalem will be destroyed. And then the woman who's now in the wilderness, who has gone with the covenant or the promise that was given to Joseph, who went over the wall to a fruitful place, to the extremity of the earth, and he'll raise up in the latter days an ensign, and he'll gather his people from the four corners of the earth. And many of them will be purged. The book of Daniel talks about this. This is the saints will be given these white garments, but just before that, it says that they'll, they'll have to be murdered and killed and be purged that they might make their garments white. So they get the garments by washing them in the blood of the Lord. They get their garments not by having just simply had oil in their lamps and waiting patiently and chaste virgins waiting for the Lord with perfect, unspotted, happy faces standing and waiting for the Lord and, and never get involved with this system, this world, and become a doctor, a lawyer where people are murdered or killed and, and I'll conspire to make money off the backs of the poor or, or I'll make a covenant with death. I'll get my conscience to where it's seared and I don't even know what I'm doing. Remember, they don't have any oil in their lamps. Their lamps went out. So we're not just talking about a little lantern. The lantern shines light, but you're supposed to, as a Christian, shine light and goodness and love. It means they, it, well, the Bible says the love of the greater number shall cease. 
There'll be more bad people than good people. And and doesn't mean they're evil and they're 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 never going to be saved. It means that they they don't have any light. There's a lamp there. They're still a child of the Lord, but their light went out. They don't have love. They don't want the truth. And so many Christians today, even though they say they believe in Jesus, they're not living for the Lord and they're not loving their neighbor. They may have gone to war and murdered a bunch of Iraqis or Vietnamese or something and thought they were heroes. But you can't be righteous if you don't understand what love is. John, the apostle, says that if you don't love your neighbor and feed them, and you say you have love, you're a liar. And this is how we know if we're in Christ. Because we love. And we feed the hungry. We clothe the naked. It's very simple. You'll know my disciples by the love among themselves. They love their neighbor. And you stop loving, that's when your light goes out. And you're not helping others and giving them a cup of water. I don't know, but I do believe that there will be those that while they are executed for being a Christian, in the end, I don't believe they'll deny the Lord. I think many of them will will not deny the Lord and they will be put to death for having been Christians. But I don't believe that Anyone who walks spotlessly with the Lord and declares the gospel throughout this time boldly, confesses his name boldly before men, I think it means that there's a certain thing we've got to do. This harp has 10 strings. We've got to make it harmonize. We've got to be humming and showing love. I think you find these scriptures like, if you give a little cup of water to one of these little ones, you'll by no means lose your reward. I think it means, I mean, what do you mean lose your reward? And that could apply to any time in history, but specifically, I think it's talking about in the tribulation. We might be scared. They're rounding people up and we don't know what's going on. And we're too scared to go and help somebody in the ditch or give a cup of water to one of these little ones. But Jesus says, even if you just, during this time, if you are bold enough and have enough integrity and you won't bow to the beast knowing that, yeah, you're probably going to die but you won't do it. And you see somebody in need and this is how we will know them by their fruits. They'll love their brothers and they'll love their neighbor. And so just being bold enough to declare the good news, giving them a cup of water which might even represent the good news or may just be an act of kindness because that does declare the good news, doesn't it? But you won't lose your reward. Now, there will be people that will lose the reward of of that immediate change and never having to die. I mean, that's quite an honor. Like Enoch, who never died and was taken to heaven, will be just changed in twinkling of an eye. But only that will be allowed to those who endure all the way into the end. Don't give up your crown. Don't lose your crown, the apostles used to say. So you can lose your crown because many of those will get white robes anyway by washing them in the blood of the Lamb. They'll have to be purged in order to get their white robes. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get the crown. They won't have that dominion and rule on 12 thrones and rule over the 12 houses of Israel, which actually will be 144,000 thrones because they will reign and rule with Christ upon the earth for a thousand years. And what that actually means, I mean, I can hardly assume that it means that it, that it doesn't mean that we'll be above in rank everyone else. But I don't think it's about telling people what to do, or reigning over them. Christ reigns with a rod of iron, but that's a shepherd's staff. It means to guide the sheep, to bandage their wounds. Whoever shall be your greatest shall be the servant of all. But 
the woman is going to be in the wilderness. If she was in the city, she'd be dead. He just warns you that. All the cities, all the people are going to die. People, he specifically said all the people in the cities are going to die. But those who are smart enough to go into the wilderness, it will, they'll be persecuted. Some of them might be dying too. But those who are really faithful and they got oil in their lamps, what does that mean? That they, they put the work in and they prepared and they're shining their light brightly. They're giving to their neighbor. They're teaching the gospel. Those who teach the gospel have their lights shining. But you don't know the gospel yet. So you can't teach the gospel. Because if you're Jehovah's Witness and you think you're teaching the gospel, well, you're not really shining very brightly. There's a very dull shine on that. And the funny thing is, is you're also got one finger out beckoning them to go into the wrong direction. So you're not going to get any reward for that. You must humbly come before the Lord. How are they going to be sent if they are not called? So you've got to be called. And then you will be chosen. Because there are many that are called, but few that are chosen. So a lot of you are called. Even maybe Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Adventists, Baptists, whatever, you're all called to be a Christian or you love the Lord or whatever. But do you want to be chosen to get through this? Because you're not going to make it through this. The elect are the ones that are chosen, predestined from the founding of the world. Because they're the firstborn. They're his brothers. Brothers and sisters. Of his immediate family. He made a covenant with them, with us. Not for the whole world. But he made a covenant with us when he was on the earth. And, and this diet or this covenant that we partake of. Where we fast and pray and we, we have, we're willingly, you know, loving one another and giving in order that we might receive and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, but not the rest of the whole world. We're the first fruits. And so the woman represents the covenant in a sense, or the city itself, or the covenant. The city was under the covenant, so sometimes they call this city Jerusalem a woman. Here's the next chapter. No one is just. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. And if you can, find a man. If there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, I will pardon it. Do you hear what that's saying? If you go to Jerusalem today, that's what this is talking about. And you, if you could find one man that living in Jerusalem or in that state over there, that wants to seek the truth. I will pardon it. But there will not be one. They're all under this great delusion over there. And so therefore, the Lord will not pardon them. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. Is that talking about the hollow? There's a lot of cost to that hollowness. But they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. And they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgments of their deity. And I will get me unto the great men, and I will speak unto them, for they will know the way of the Lord and the judgment of their deity. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds, wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Who is this leopard and wolf and a lion? These are the astrological signs in the sky. The wolf is Syria. The lion is Babylon. The leopard is Greece. All of them destroyed Jerusalem in the past. And they'll be torn to pieces because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. 
How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that there are no gods. Most of them are atheists, you know, the scientists. Marxism, Freudism, Darwinism. They then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. They were as fed horses in the morning and everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. That's what they're doing to this day all over the world. That's what everybody's doing. They're out running around in the streets neighing after their neighbor's wife. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord And shall not my soul be avenged on such nations as this? Go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, and neither shall we see sword or famine. Maybe they're talking about how they denied the Lord Jesus. And the prophets shall become wind, and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. And therefore judgment is proclaimed. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord, deity of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make thy words in thy mouth fire. And this people, and this people be the wood, and it shall devour them. And lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understand what they say. Their quiver is as an open sepulcher. They are all mighty men, and they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat, and they shall eat up thy flocks and thy herds, and they shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees, and they shall impoverish thy fenced cities wherein thou trustedest with thy sword. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you, yet it shall come to pass When ye shall say, Wherefore doth the Lord our deity all these things unto us? Then shall thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and served strange deities in your land, so shall ye serve strange strangers in the land that is not yours. You're going to go into captivity. And this is in our day. They've already done the leopard and the grease and the uh, or, or the lion and 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 the the wolf, which is Assyria. Hear now, O foolish people. And without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass, and through the waves thereof toss themselves, and ye cannot prevail, though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it? But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord, our deity, that giveth rain. I mean, if they've been persecuted all these thousands of years, you know, and so we, we got to give them this new land and let them have another chance. Well, okay. Here it has been over 70 some years and they're still immoral and murdering and deceiving and doing all manner of evil. Worse than they have ever done. Now they're inventing some sort of uh, AI to take over man and make us all slaves in a great Jinnah cider. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord that giveth rain, both the former and the latter. The the former rain and the latter? He's talking about the the Holy Spirit. They don't care about that. We're going to get that. We're going to get the latter rain. In its season... He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men that lay wait, as he that set a snares, they set a trap. They catch men as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they became great and waxen rich. Who are the rich today, friends? Think about it. They are waxen fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper, and the right of the needy they do not judge. Shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord, 
Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and a horrible thing is committed in that land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? See, the false prophets Jesus warned us of. Come out to meet him. He's in the desert. He's in the inner chamber. We rebuilt the temple. He's, the Messiah is here. Friends, don't believe it. And their priests bear rule by their means or by that means. See, this is how we know who these people are. These are priests. And, and who's priests? The modern scientists and the leadership the presidents and, and, and these prime ministers and the news and all of this, they're telling us that, oh, there's going to be peace, peace, but there is no peace. They bear rule over most of the world because of their false prophecy and their prophets telling the world that we've got to have this group of people over there to rule the world. When Jesus, when he arrived, had transferred and taken the keys from them and given it to those producing its fruit. Other tribes of Israel, he loves too. And he's going to gather them all. And there's going to be one nation under deity with liberty for all and justice. And all of these things shall be happening very soon, my friends. I'm going to go ahead and go, guys. I hope you have a wonderful evening. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. And enlighten your mind and bless all your family. I'm going to go ahead and go. Have a great day.